Welcome to the Art of Living Free series with Anthony Szilard, brought to you by theartoflivingfree.org. Today, Dr. Szilard explores what addicts us to news about the pandemic, part one. Hello, I'm Anthony Szilard, and welcome to the Art of Living Free. What addicts us to news about the pandemic? Well, it's the same thing that, that's addicted us to technology in the first place. So let's take a look at that. George Bernard Shaw once said, beware of false knowledge. It is more dangerous than ignorance. So there's, as you know, there's a lot of false knowledge out there. There's a lot of fake news, a lot of information that's really not helping us in any way. And we have to really focus on how can we regulate the news. I call it news regulation. How can we regulate how we consume the news so it doesn't affect us in a negative way. We don't, we don't get steered towards stories that are, that are just you know, false knowledge. Instead, we can focus on what really is wisdom. So the first thing to realize is what app developers have, have, have done very, very successfully. They've hit it out of the park. To get us so addicted to apps, including those that, that share news with us, um, is, is that they target the dopamine-inducing qualities of these apps. So uh, Nir, Nir Iyal, who uh, teaches courses in Silicon Valley about, uh, you know, about how to, essentially how to manipulate people, so like, like technology and psychology go really together these days, like how to manipulate, this is for app developers, how to manipulate people so they keep, they, basically the market is for our attention, so we keep our attention on those apps all the time. Here's what Nir Yal has shared, which I quote in my book, Screened In, The Art of Living Free in the Digital Age. He says, the technologies we use have turned into compulsions, if not full-fledged addictions. It's the impulse to check a message notification. It's the pull to visit YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter for just a few minutes, only to find yourself still tapping and scrolling an hour later. This is no coincidence, according to Nir Yal. It's just as their designers intended. In fact, just as he taught them, right? So, We've, I'm sure you've heard the term doom scrolling during the pandemic. That's become a popular term. You know, we just keep going down and down these news sites all day long um, because, you know, we're trying to preserve our existence. Remember, anxiety is an existential emotion. So when we feel there's something threatens our existence, then we try to, we, you know, we try to cope with that by preventing it from threatening our existence. So we go through the news doom scrolling. Am I going to find something here that's going to help me in my life, help me protect my family? But but the hypervigilance associated with that, our immune system goes into overdrive, it actually harms us. Well, one important thing to realize is that the dopamine-inducing qualities of the apps and of your phones and of your, of your screens, your laptops, your tablets, they were in place well before the pandemic. So many people come to me and they say, say hey, now that we're in the pandemic and kids have to be learning on Zoom and and you know, and and you know, I even teach. I do conferences on Zoom sometimes. And they say, uh, they say, like, doesn't that prove that actually, you know, what you wrote about in your book, Screened In: The Art of Living Free in the Digital Age, was that we have to regulate our use of our screens. But now we're slaves to our screens. And isn't that just the way it is now? Don't don't we need our screens to connect with each other? Well, let's take a look first before the pandemic. Okay, so going back to January of 2020, loneliness. A Cigna study that came out in January found that th over three in five Americans were lonely based on the UCLA loneliness scale. Okay, anxiety, CDC data, this came out, come out in July 2020, had tripled over what it was a year before. Depression, mental health issues, all have skyrocketed right, during the pandemic. But even before the pandemic, depression, anxiety had increased significantly. So many studies that have, that have shown that. So if it's the case that our screens is that this is a form of connecting with each other that's really useful. Like actually it's going to help us to, to make more heart connections with each other, to really like warm embracing connections where we, where we feel, uh, you know, we release oxytocin, we feel this sort of neurochemical bonding with each other that, that turns out to be an excellent buffer against anxiety and depression and stress and so forth. If that's the case, then why is it that even before the pandemic it wasn't working? What happened is we, we would go online seeking social connection. This is one of the main premises of, of my book, Screened In. We go, on the line seeking so, sorry, we go online seeking social connection, but we end up with social information. 
Now, social information is different than social connection. Social information, for example, is the reason that if you ask Facebook users, and a study in Germany did exactly this. They asked Facebook users how they felt while using Facebook. You want to guess what the number one reported emotion of Facebook users is? It's envy. Why is that? Because you go on Facebook and you see the one moment from a friend's vacation, the week-long vacation, you see the one moment, this is before the pandemic, when people were going on these family vacations, you see the one moment in the vacation where everyone's smiling. And you go, why isn't my family smile like that? Um, women tend to shrink their photos or take the, the, the photos showing them looking the thinnest possible and upload them to their social media profiles. Men, the opposite, they try to show, well, <laughs> they don't want to be fat, but they want to show how buff they are and, they, and, they, and that's how they present themselves. It's a collective game of self-presentation and almost everyone is a loser. This is the problem. We go online seeking social connection. We end up with social information. So that means that during the pandemic, we need to find other ways of developing social connection rather than just going on our phones and on our laptops and hoping that's going to get, because we go online seeking social connection. Again, we end up with social information, more envy, more depression, more loneliness, more anxiety. Not a good, not a good idea. Life offers us many challenges, and theartoflivingfree.org offers new ways of thinking so we can see these challenges from a new angle and overcome them. Whether it's Anthony Szilard's free blog, video or podcast series, his book, Screened In, The Art of Living Free in the Digital Age, or personalized courses, theartoflivingfree.org will help you refine your life vision and then transform it into action. Find out more at theartoflivingfree.org.